Capture Sharpening Twice in Adobe Camera Raw. When you apply capture sharpening in Adobe Camera Raw, you need to tune your sharpening settings to the details in your photograph. The typical advice that you'll receive is that when a photograph has lots of small details, you want to use a narrower radius setting, and when it has larger details, you'll want to use a wider radius setting. Now the sharpening settings on the detail panel are tuned for capture sharpening. So they're going to be a lot less aggressive than they are in Photoshop with something like the Unsharp Mask filter. You'll often run into photographs where there's a combination of smaller details and larger details. What do you do in that case? One solution is just to figure out which predominates. If you have a photograph that has mostly small, tiny details, then you'll want to focus your radius settings on those. You'll want to use a smaller radius setting. If you have a photograph of, for example, a portrait or something with broader edges or more diffuse edges to it, then you'll want to have a larger radius setting for that photograph. Another strategy is to figure out which settings are best for the smaller details and which settings are best for the larger details, and then try to come up with some kind of compromise setting. Both of those choices are going to be less effective than if you tune the sharpening for those tiny details with one set of sharpening settings, and then you use a second set of sharpening settings for the larger details. Consider, for example, this photograph of Lake Panasofsky in Florida. This is a photograph that has lots of tiny little details in the foliage and the trees and the grasses along the edge of the lake. But the photograph also has some broader details in the railroad bridge and particularly in the reflections in the water. Now that's not so obvious here at less than 25% for the zoom, but if we're going to go ahead and sharpen an Adobe Camera Raw in order to be able to see those settings, we've got to go to at least 100% zoom anyways. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and make it 100% zoom. Go ahead, grab the hand tool here, move it, and I'm going to go ahead and enter some settings in order to first bring some detail into the foliage. Now the sharpening settings on the detail panel are set up for capture sharpening. So they're going to be reduced in their effect compared to what you might get in Photoshop if you were using something like the Unsharp Mask filter. People sometimes also find it helpful when they're trying to adjust the amount if they hold down the Alt key. That will turn off the color and just see the luminosity. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull this up to something like, oh, about 80 or 85 percent for the amount. I'm going to reduce the radius. I'm going to reduce that down to something like 0 0.7 for this photograph here. The detail setting, you might want to make an adjustment to that here. I'm holding down the Alt key. You might want to pull that up to something like mm, around 40. And then for masking, I want to go ahead, I want to start to have a, an edge mask to this, but I don't want to have a really fine, defined edge mask to this because there's a lot of fine vegetation here that I still want to have some sharpening effect to. So I've gone ahead and picked something like 40. And if you hold down the Alt key as you adjust the slider, you can see the mask itself. And you can see that this mask is sort of a compromise between a surface mask and an edge mask. It's not a very narrow edge mask. It's got much broader edges to it. And so the sharpening effect's not going to be as narrowly constrained as if I pull the mask clear up here to something like 8, 78 or 80. So go back down here to something like 40. The idea of the capture sharpening effect that you want to aim for here when you're doing this with your monitor in Adobe Camera Raw is you don't yet want the photograph to look crunchy at all. You do not really want to see any visible sharpening halos yet. We're just trying to restore the sharpness that was lost by digital capture. And you'll notice as I go ahead and toggle the preview on and off, that the photograph does have more sharpness to it. We are getting some capture sharpening effect, but yet we're not really getting any scary halos developing in the photograph yet. I'm going to go ahead down here, click on open object, so this will go ahead and load the photograph into Photoshop. So now I have the photograph loaded into Photoshop. These settings were designed for the smaller features in the photograph, and I want to go ahead now and do a second set of settings for the larger features in the photograph. So I'm going to go up here to the Layers palette. I'm going to click on the right mouse button. The option that I want to select is New Smart Object via Copy. Now I have a second Smart Object. It currently has exactly the same settings that I had previously. I can now double click on this layer. I can go back to the Detail panel, and now I can make a second round of sharpening adjustments. Before I do that so I can see their effect, I'm going to go up here, go to 100%. And now I'm going to pay attention to some of these details here along the water. I could also pay attention to details along the bridge, but for this photograph, 
What I really want to do is bring some more definition here to the water and these ripples along the water. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull this up to something like, oh, 105. I'm going to adjust the radius to be a little broader than that. I'm going to make it 1.2. The detail, I'm going to go ahead, drop that back down to something like about 35. And for the masking, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to reduce that down to more like about 20. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. And the next step for this is to add a layer mask. Because we're going to go ahead and paint in now the effect of the wider radius and the settings for the broader features. So layer mask. Hide all. I want to fill it with black. I want to select the brush tool here. White is my foreground color. My mask is active. My opacity is set at 35%. I normally like to use something like 25 to 35% opacity. That lets me build up the effects slowly over successive strokes. Because I'm going to go ahead and try to get this video done in just a few moments, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up temporarily. Normally I would not use 100% opacity for this. I would use, as I said, something like 25 or 30, 35%. Build this up over successive strokes. And now I can go ahead and brush in the effect with my brush tool. And you'll notice here, for example, how I'm brushing in the detail along the ripples in the water here. And so the important thing that you should realize here is that you are not limited to just a single set of capture sharpening settings with Adobe Camera Raw. You can actually use multiple sharpening settings and target them to different features in your photograph. Typically what you might want to do with a photograph that has a mixture of both fine details and broader details is go ahead and use two separate layers, one that's targeted at the finer details and one that's targeted at the broader details. I hope you find the idea of capture sharpening twice in Adobe Camera Raw to be helpful with your digital photography. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.